My name is Gene Dickerson. Uh, I'm uh, here today to present a uh, overview, uh, excerpts from a book that I've written called Automotive Climate Control, 116 Years of Progress. My background is that um, I worked at Ford Motor Company uh, from 1963 to 1998. Uh, most of my career was in the uh, automotive climate control product engineering office, heating, air conditioning, ventilation, heat exchangers. In the beginning of uh, the automobile uh, development, engineers were focused on getting automobiles to, to go forward, to reverse, to turn, and stop. That was their, t their focus, uh, and heating and cooling vehicles was, was uh, uh, not a priority at all. In the beginning, this is an uh, image of an 1897 Parisian motor car, and this is not the first automobile, but it's an example of uh, what was done in the beginning to stay warm. You can see the uh, driver and the passenger had what we call lap robes uh, to stay warm. This is another example of the clothing used to, to stay warm in the beginning, 1902. This fellow has a woolly coat, uh, gloves, again a lap robe, and a, a hat to stay warm. 1903, something called storm aprons were introduced. These were uh, essentially tarpaulins with elasticated openings for a person's head to go through. Um, you can see they were offered in two, four, five, and one openings. Uh, this image here is a Packard in 1903 that had just completed a test trip from Detroit to Chicago and back to Detroit. This photo was taken downtown Detroit. Specialized clothing uh, was, was uh, common in the beginning. This is a 1903 ad. Uh, you see specialized uh, uh, leather trousers, hats, gloves, fur coats, vests, and specialized boots. Again, this is high fashion, woman's fashion. This is a coat, and the hat contains goggles that she could fold down for when she was riding in the vehicle. This is an, a one-page of two from the 1908 Sears Robot catalog, and, and they're, they're selling what they call lap robes or plush robes. Uh, as I said, this is one of two pages. There was a, a myriad of different uh, robes available. Uh, the prices ranged from a dollar and ten cents to seven dollars and thirty cents, and uh, these, of course, were carryover from the horse and buggy days. Um, very picturesque uh, animals uh, were were a common theme, decorative theme. Uh, they were also selling these uh, charcoal heaters, and I'm going to get into more depth than that in just a moment. And the lap robes were not in use. They were stored on something called a robe rail, and this was a rail on the back of the driver's seat of a vehicle, and the, the robe was, was stored there. There were also something called robe cords, which uh, were, were uh, similar to a rail, except the cord was uh, flexible, of course. Uh, this was an interesting ad from that era. This was called a robe uh, lock, and uh, it's, it was made of machine brass, and it was, uh, as you can see, uh, placed over the top of the robe, and then there was a key to, to lock it. Uh, I'm not sure how effective it would be, but uh, it was just an example of uh, what was going on in that era. Back to the charcoal heaters. These heaters were very popular in the beginning, and again, this is directly carryover from the horse and buggy days. The way these things worked is before a person wanted to, to travel and use one of these heaters, they had to take charcoal briquettes, place them in a, in a roaring open fire, coal or wood fire. After the briquettes were red hot, they had to remove them from the fire, place them into this tray, close the tray, carry the heater out to the vehicle, place it on the floor of the vehicle, get in the vehicle, put their feet on the, on the uh, heater, and then cover their legs and feet with a, with a lap robe in order to contain the heat. And supposedly, uh, these things would burn for several hours. So you can imagine 
uh, it took a lot of time to prepare to, to drive in, in the cold weather. It's not like today driving down to the 7-Eleven, uh, you get in the car and turn the key and go. Uh, th this took a lot of preparation. And these, as I said, were very popular. Reportedly, millions of these things were sold. Uh, there were several manufacturers of these charcoal heaters. Cooling, uh, of course, was, uh, was not even uh, talked about in the beginning. I've included this image uh, as a, for two reasons. First of all, to show what, what they did in the beginning to drive through the desert. This image is of the 1903 Packard. It was known as Old Pack for Old Pacific. This was the second car to cross the United States. It cost, it crossed the, in the, the summer of, of 1903. As I said, it was the second car to cross. It was one month later than the first car to cross the United States. And, and this, this image was taken uh, near Reno, Nevada on the third or fourth day of the, the trek across the United States. It's a, it's a fascinating story, these, these first three vehicles to cross the U.S. And uh, uh, this vehicle is interesting in that it is, was restored in the 1980s and it's now on display at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. And I uh, happened to be in the museum after I had written the book and I, I saw the car on display and I thought, boy, that car looks very familiar. And uh, sure enough, it, it's old pack. It is the... Uh, the actual vehicle is fully authenticated, been fully restored, and uh, the mud that's shown on here was added after the, after the vehicle was restored. Uh, it doesn't look authentic. But I want to show you something. See this umbrella that's, that's on display there? I can't say for sure that it's the same one that was uh, in the vehicle when it, when it was uh, photographed in Nevada, but it sure looks like it could be. The, uh, my book uh, also includes historical highlights of uh, windshield wipers. And uh, windshield wipers, of course, were a part of the climate control situation in that you needed wipers in order to, uh, to see through the windshield once windshields were introduced into vehicles. Mary Anderson is credited with the first patent for uh, windshield wipers. And this was not necessarily automotive specific. Uh, she originally intended them for use on streetcars, but uh, it is an interesting patent, and uh, it uh, was reportedly never it never went into production. But it's it's noteworthy because a a woman uh, was the inter inventor of this uh, of this device. 1907 was one of the earliest automotive specific heaters that I could find in my research, and just as a sidebar, every time I thought that I had found the first of something. Later research, I found something earlier than that. So I, I, uh, almost everything uh, in the book is a, an early example rather than the first. But this is a, this is a heater uh, designed specifically for a motor car. What they did is they placed a steel uh, jacket or sleeve around the muffler of the vehicle and there was a flexible pipe that ran from the sleeve up to a plenum chamber or register in the floor of the vehicle. And as it ram air came through this, uh, this sleeve, it came through this tube and forced the, the hot air up into the passenger compartment. So this, this exhaust heating was typical for many years in automotive heater, heaters. And uh, we'll, we'll touch on a little more as we go along here. This is another way that the early vehicles were uh, uh, modified in order to stay warm. This is a 1908 Franklin. This photograph was taken in Alaska, which is kind of interesting if you thought to think about it. 1908 automobiles, Alaska, it's like, how do you get them to Alaska? Because uh, I think the Franklins were, were made somewhere on the East Coast. Uh, but I wanted to point out two things in this uh, image. First, this vehicle is fitted with uh, tire chains. And of course, nowadays, people uh, don't know much about tire chains. But uh, in, the, in the beginning, they needed tire chains to get through the ice and snow. 
The other thing that I wanted to, to show you is the coverings that were fitted to the vehicle in order to, uh, to protect the driver and the passengers from the, the cold. These were canvas covers and they had see-through windows on them. And you may or may not have uh, heard the expression, Isinglass glass windows that roll right down from, from a uh, famous Broadway musical, Oklahoma. Uh, they talked about Isinglass glass curtains that roll right down. Well, it turns out, I think, that Isinglass glass was a misnomer in that Isinglass glass is a mica sheet that's mined. And I think what they were really using in that era was either regular flat glass or celluloid. But uh, again, these were, were clear openings that uh, the driver and the passenger could look through. This is part of my research. Uh, 1922 Dykes uh, Automobile uh, Reference Manual. They talked about celluloid windows rather than Isinglass uh, for repairing uh, soft tops on uh, automobiles. This is something interesting, 1912 electrically heated driver's gloves. Um, again, another way to, to keep the, the driver's hands warm uh, while, while driving a car in that era. This is, uh, I showed you Mary's uh, Anderson's patent uh, that never went into production, but this is one of the very earliest examples of a windshield wiper that I could find in my research. And uh, it, it was uh, uh, sold by the Emo Grossman Company, New York City and Detroit, Michigan. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And uh, of course it was a purely mechanical device. There was a rubber blade here that fitted, uh, w that was on the uh, outside of the glass. And the driver, hand operated, moved, uh, moved it across from side to side to keep the, the uh, windshield clear. This is an interesting device. It's an heated, electrically heated steering wheel from 1914. Uh, use the uh, vehicle's uh, battery to, uh, to power these uh, little heaters that were attached to the uh, steering wheel using laces. And you can see the, the cord is here wrapped around the steering column. 1915 Chevrolet Baby Grand. Uh, this, this vehicle is fitted with two windshield wipers. This is the earliest example I could find of, of two windshield wipers. And these were, of course, hand operated. Uh, and I'm not sure in my research whether these were fitted uh, at the Chevrolet factory or whether they were aftermarket. But uh, it is a good example of uh, uh, hand operated windshield wipers. 1916 Hudson uh, was offered with, uh, with shutters in front of the radiator. And again, these are, these are being offered on modern automobiles, or fitted to modern automobiles, in order to uh, increase the, uh, the control of the cooling system. These were intended to increase uh, uh, the warm-up of the vehicle um, by closing off the air going through the radiator. 1916 Detroit Electric Vehicle. These were battery-powered vehicles, similar to the ones that we're uh, looking at today. Um, these were pure electrics, these were not hybrids. And um, I've included this image for two reasons. First of all, it's an exa early example of an electric windshield wiper. This was the, the motor here, and this was the switch to control it. This was the blade. And uh, uh, the other thing that's interesting about this photo is this is the, the ventilation air intake for this car, this 1916 Detroit Electric. Uh, uh, was above the header in the in the passenger compartment. That's how they got fresh air into the passenger compartment. The 1917 Jordan is one of the first vehicles that I could find in my research that offered a heater uh, as a factory uh, fitment. Prior to this, uh, the heaters were installed by dealers and or repair shops. This is an early example of a hot water heater. Um, this uh, featured a heat exchanger in the passenger compartment, rear compartment of the vehicle, and a heat exchanger in the front compartment of the vehicle. And uh, as near as I could tell, rigid piping to get the, 
the engine coolant uh, to flow through these two heat exchangers. Now, just as a sidebar, many of the early vehicles were uh, air-cooled, and uh, I, I didn't really do the research on uh, uh, when the water cooling came in, but uh, I think the Packard was water-cooled, as an example. So it was kind of a combination of air-cooled, water-cooled uh, in, in the beginning of the automobile era. Something uh, we all take for granted today is a, is a closed passenger compartment in vehicles and um, we don't expect any unwanted drafts. In the beginning, these vehicles had uh, typically wooden uh, floorboards and tow boards, and the slots in these uh, tow boards were wide in order to uh, take up for the tolerance stack-ups that occurred. Uh, they were pretty loose-fitting. Same thing around the, uh, this is the parking brake, and um, so this aftermarket company offered these uh, pedal slot closers. They were attached to the wooden floorboard using uh, wood screws, and uh, they, were, they were two pieces of rubber that hugged the pedal. As the pedal moved, it, it, it uh, maintained a uh, seal around the uh, pedals. Again, uh, something uh, you wouldn't, uh, would never see on a modern vehicle. This is uh, an early example of a vacuum uh, wiper motor. Um, again, these were aftermarket as opposed to uh, fitted by the uh, original manufacturers of the vehicles. So the point is that both vacuum and electric motors were available for windshield wipers essentially since the beginning. Uh, but for many years, the most popular systems were vacuum rather than electric. And uh, j just so that everybody knows, vacuum systems were lower in cost, but they were very, very dangerous in that whenever you accelerated, you would lose engine vacuum and the wipers would stop working. <laughs> you're passing another vehicle, you're out in, this is, these are two lane roads, you're, you're, you're facing oncoming traffic, you're accelerating, windshield wipers stop in the middle of the rain. Very, very dangerous. And uh, uh, the only reason I could, I could find uh, for continuing to use vacuum wipers up until the 1960s was they were lower in cost. Ventilation and vision or uh, uh, variable ventilation. Um, what happened is the windshield actually rose about one and a half to two inches above the top of the cowl of an actual uh, Chevrolet from that era, and you can see here, this is a scoop, an air scoop, so that as the air came across the cowl of the vehicle, it came into that scoop and then was diverted downward into the pasture compartment. Uh, and if you wanted more ventilation, you raised it above that, that scoop, and that would give you more ventilation in the, in the car.